All right. So welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Before you head off to Scandinavia, we wanted to reach out to answer questions that you may have about what to pack, uh, currency, where to meet. And first, I'll go over just some general information. I'll answer some of the questions that you submitted on the registration forms. And then at the end of the presentation, I'll open it up for any additional questions that you may have. So like I said, if you missed um, just the very very beginning. If you have questions, you can submit them down in the bottom right hand corner. And either I will address those at the end of the presentation or someone from our office. Um, they're helping me answer those questions as they come through. So I've got a team effort today. All right. It's been a while since everybody has traveled um, overseas. So I'm hoping that you are all ex is ex are as excited as we are. I can't even talk. I'm so excited. Um, so let's kick it off and let's get to Scandinavia. So my name is Amanda Hancock. I'm the manager of sales and marketing for Brecky Tours. And if you have any questions that I don't answer for you today, please feel free to contact me by phone or email. And then I also invite you to visit our website as you'll find a variety of information about traveling in Scandinavia and beyond. And I know some of you had questions specific to your escorted tour, and I may not answer those online today, but we'll be sure to get an answer to you um, via email after the webinar. So a couple of weeks before you depart on your trip to Scandinavia, you can expect to receive a packet of information from our office, and we will send one packet of information per couple. In the package, you'll find the following, a departure letter with some basic information pertaining to your specific tour, a final tour itinerary, your final flight itinerary, some luggage tags, contact information for the hotels you'll be staying at while on tour, airport information, and any other additional information that might pertain to your particular tour. Now, some documents are more important than others. For instance, please double check to make sure that your passport is valid. And it's a passport book, the one that you see here on the, the slide, the little blue um, that says passport on it. Um, make sure your passport is valid for at least three to six months after your return date and that you have a copy or even two of your passport. Be sure to pack your passport and a copy in your carry-on. Don't put them in your check luggage. I can't stress that enough. Do not put your passport in your stress luggage, in your check luggage. You may want to leave a copy of your passport with a family member or a friend, which can be sent to the U.S. Embassy in case your passport is lost or stolen while overseas. And if you'd like to speed up the reentry process when returning to the U.S., we recommend downloading the mobile passport app to your smartphone. The service requires a small fee per account and takes a few minutes to enter the required information, but it will save you time when going through U.S. Customs. It's completely optional, though. Um, it's, it's just something to help you kind of speed up the passport or the customs process. But... Um, please take a few moments to ensure that the name listed on your airline ticket matches your passport name, and this includes your first, middle, and last name. You may also want to keep your airline receipt to ensure that your miles are credited to your account. The airlines are responsible for crediting your points to your frequent flyer account. Thus, if your account balance is incorrect, please contact the airlines directly. And finally, if you've booked any independent services with us, um, such as a pre or post tour, please review your documents before departing the U.S. and contact us immediately if you notice any errors or if you have any questions. Please note that the vouchers will have emergency contact numbers in case you need assistance while traveling. And finally, please be sure to note any spe special instructions on your vouchers. And for instance, some train vouchers must be exchanged for an actual ticket before boarding the train. So we had a lot of questions about luggage. So on the land portion of our tour, we allow one suitcase and one carry-on bag per person. Luggage handling at hotels is provided for one suitcase. Thus, your luggage will be delivered and picked up from your room at the beginning and end of your stay. And that's for most of the hotels on our tours. 
not all, but most. We do provide two luggage tags per person, thus please put these tags on your large suitcase and your carry-on. You may also want to put a label with your name, address, and phone number inside your luggage in case your tag becomes separated. Most airlines do offer one free piece of checked luggage on international flights. Now, if you have a domestic ticket booked in conjunction with your international flight, the airlines may charge a baggage fee. So you'll wanna check with your airline before departing to see if any fees will apply. Now, typically your check luggage can weigh up to 50 pounds and the dimensions cannot exceed 62 inches. A standard large roller bag is what we recommend using on your trip. And for your carry-on, typically the weight cannot exceed 22 pounds and the dimensions should not go over 45 inches. And so both of those dimensions are length, width, and height. Because luggage fees and restrictions can vary from airline to airline, we recommend contacting your airline directly for more information. And you'll see on the slide there's links to the different airlines and everybody will receive a copy of uh, this presentation after, so you'll be able to, to look at that more in detail. We also had a, question, a lot of questions about what to pack. So in your suitcase, you may want to pack the following. Casual clothing is appropriate for all of our tours. For nights where we have dinner included, you may want to bring slacks and a nice shirt or a blouse, as Scandinavians do like to dress up a bit for dinner, but it's completely optional. Clothing that can be layered is recommended as temperatures can change depending on your travel during the day. Good walking shoes are a must as sightseeing along cobblestone streets and walking in the mountains of Norway, not really the place for heels and flip-flops. A raincoat with a removable lining is a good choice, or you may choose to bring a rain poncho. A light coat or a jacket may be necessary in the morning and during the evening. And you may want to bring a swimsuit if you'd like to enjoy any of the pools or spas at the hotels. And finally, leave your valuables at home. If it's something that will create an emotional or financial hardship, it's best just to leave it behind. In case your luggage is delayed, I recommend packing a change of clothing in your carry-on bag. And if you're traveling with someone, put some of your clothes in their suitcase and vice versa in case one bag is delayed. Now, if you're planning to visit family or friends in Scandinavia, you may want to bring a small gift, especially if they're extending their hospitality in some way. Appropriate gifts include an American flag or windsock, books, calendars, caps, t-shirts, or other items unique to your city or state, college or professional sports clothing or caps, Native American or country and Western themed items, liquor or liqueurs, and for children, Disney clothing, candy, puzzles, or cartoon characters. Some other items that you may wanna include, um, an extra memory card or batteries for your camera, snacks and a refillable water bottle, washcloths if you're like me and you like to wash your face at the end of the day a lot of hotels in scandinavia do not have washcloths in the room so it's something that you may want to bring uh, tissues sewing kit or safety pins medications and this includes prescription and over-the-counter band-aids and a first aid kit are also good things to pack converter or an adapter and we'll talk a little bit more about those in just a minute sunscreen and sunglasses extra eyeglasses or a repair kit, as well as extra contacts or solution, maps and travel information, spot remover such as a Tide stick or wipes, inflatable pillow and an eye mask, an umbrella or a poncho, a journal to record your favorite memories of the day, a small day pack for sweaters, cameras, snacks, and water, and plastic baggies. So um, anytime you happen to use the pool or if you are out walking and you, um, you know, you have a sweater that gets wet or something from the rain, um, you can put those in the plastic baggies and they won't ruin the rest of your clothes. So it's good to have those along. So the climate in Scandinavia is very similar to that in the northeastern United States, though rarely as hot in the summer or as cold in the winter. 
Average daytime temperatures in Fahrenheit for June, July, and August range from the high 40s to the mid 60s, depending on your region of travel. It's always a good idea to check the weather forecast before you depart the US. So now to talk about converters and adapters. The world runs on two types of electricity, 110 volt or 220 volt. North American devices typically run on 110 volt, while the majority of the world runs on 220. So if your device is dual voltage, that means it will work with either, then all that you need is the adapter, which actually changes the plug. And that is the black um, little plug that you see down here. And they are relatively inexpensive, three to $5 a piece. Now, if your device is not dual voltage, um, you will need a converter. And usually those are a little bit more expensive. They're around 30 to $35, um, but it comes usually with a big box and then some smaller boxes as well. Now to find if your device is dual voltage, you can look, um, look for a label. It may be affixed directly to the back of the device. It may be on the AC transformer box or molded into the plastic of the plug. And it's often in very small print and it's sometimes really hard to find. Um, so if you are not sure, the best way is just to bring the converter, that way you're covered. If you're sure that your um, device is dual voltage, then all you need is the adapter. So, each country in Scandinavia has its own currency. Norway, Denmark, Sweden, and Iceland each have their own currency known as the kroner. And in Finland, they use euro. The currencies of the five countries are not interchangeable. So, oh, sorry, it seems like we're having some sound issues. Let me see if I can fix that real quick. Hopefully that is better. Can people hear me now? I'm hoping, hoping everybody can hear me. Okay, all right, sounds like we're back. All right, so as I was saying, each country has its own currency. They're not interchangeable. Um, the easiest place to exchange your money is at the arrival airport. And your guide will help you find a location where to exchange money. Um, you can also exchange money at banks and some post offices. And like I said, your tour director is really going to help with that once you arrive in, into Norway. You'll find that most major credit cards, such as Visa, MasterCard, and in larger stores, American Express, are honored at most hotels, stores, banks, and restaurants. However, most credit card companies do charge a foreign transaction fee, so you'll want to contact them ahead of time to make sure you know what those fees are going to be. And we, another reason to contact your credit card company is to let them know that you're going to be out of the country. Um, this way, they'll um, not put a fraud alert or um, hold your card for suspicious, suspicious charges. Um, we also recommend making a photocopy of the front and back sides of your card to leave behind with someone at home who can assist you in case your cards are misplaced, lost, or stolen. ATMs are readily available in larger cities, and please note that some hotels and shops in Scandinavia are cashless, thus you'll need a credit card to make purchases at these locations. We don't recommend taking traveler's checks. If you'd like to find out what the um, exchange rate is, we recommend going to oanda.com, and they're pretty good about having the uh, different exchange rates for all the different currencies on that website. So if you're planning to travel to Minneapolis for your departing flight, you may be interested in our Park and Fly special in conjunction with the Hyatt Regency Bloomington Mall of America. Um, it's near the South Airport entrance and the rates start at $142 per night for a king or two queen bedroom and includes 10 free days of parking. There's also a shuttle to the airport and the Mall of America. So if you're interested in that, just give us a call or um, you can send us an email and we can get that booked for you.
All right, so most of our escorted tours are gonna fly on Iceland Air. So there are two terminals at the Minneapolis St. Paul Airport, Terminal 1, which is Lindbergh, and Terminal 2, Humphrey. Iceland Air serves Terminal 2. If you have a domestic flight arriving into Terminal 1, there is free transportation between the terminal buildings. All Iceland Air flights will route through the Keflavik Airport in Iceland. Passengers arriving on Iceland Air and continuing on will need to show their passport at customs before heading to the gate for the next leg to Scandinavia. You will not need to collect your luggage if it has been checked all the way through to your final destination. So if it's only been checked through to Keflavik, then you will need to collect it and recheck it. But most of the time they will check it all the way through, but it's just something to double check when you check in. That's a lot of checks. Uh, you will have to switch planes in Iceland, but the layover time is much shorter. Here you only need about 30 to 45 minutes to go from gate to eight, gate. So during your flight with Iceland Air, you can expect free in-flight entertainment. Headphones are for sale or you can bring your own. There are complimentary drinks such as water, soft drinks, tea, and coffee, but food is only for sale in the economy uh, class. So if you're in economy comfort or business, then you will receive complimentary uh, meals and snacks. But if you're just in economy, uh, you can bring your own or you can purchase them on the plane. For those of you that have requested window or aisle seats on your tour application, we will request the best available seats for our tour participants based on their wants or needs. Um, however, we can't guarantee that the airlines will not change or cancel the seats after the request has been made. If we are not able to assign the seats at the time of booking, you will be assigned a seat when checking into the flight. Exit row seating and bulkhead seating will not be able to be pre-assigned before check-in. Uh, they usually reserve that for people with small children or people with disabilities. So you must be able to operate the emergency door uh, to sit in the exit row as well. So then they will determine that upon check-in. If you need wheelchair assistance or an electric cart for transfers at connecting flights, we can request that, but we would recommend verifying that at the airport when you check in. Some handy tips on how to avoid jet lag. First, uh, if your flight arrives in the morning, try to sleep on board. And if you're like me, you have trouble sleeping, you can try over-the-counter sleep aids. You can also bring an eye mask, earplugs, a blanket and pillow if that will help you sleep. You may wanna bring a toothbrush and anything else, which is in a liquid or gel that you need to freshen up before getting off the plane. You will wanna wear loose fitting clothing and wear comfortable shoes. Uh, try not to take them off as feet do occasionally swell during long flights. When possible, walk up and down the aisle to stretch your limbs and get your blood circulating. Be sure to drink plenty of water on the plane and you'll wanna avoid alcohol, caffeine, and carbonated drinks. Avoid wearing contact lenses in flight because the, care ab the cabin air tends to dry them out. And if you tend to get air sick, drink a small bottle of ginger ale before boarding and pack a newspaper in your carry-on bag. The ginger ale will help calm your stomach and so will the smell of newspaper. Once you arrive, spend a lot of time out in the sunlight. This will help your body reset its natural time clock to coincide with your new surroundings. So now that you have made it to Scandinavia, where are you supposed to go do next? So a lot of times the uh, transfers are included for passengers arriving and departing on the designated flights for our group's um, escorted tours. So after deplaning, you'll collect your luggage and you'll proceed through passport control. You'll see two exits, green if you have nothing to declare and red if you have something to declare. You'll choose the appropriate exit and then once you leave the customs area, continue to the arrival hall and that's where you'll meet your tour director and she or he will be sitting there smiling and holding a brekkie sign so you'll know where to go. If you are arriving on a different flight than our group, you're welcome to join our transfers provided that the arrival time is similar. Please be sure to note, send a note to our office indicating the flight number, arrival time, and the flight's point of departure. If for some reason your flight should be delayed, we would, you would then be responsible for your own transportation to the hotel. 
If your arrival time does not coincide with the group transfer, that's not to worry. You can choose from several modes of transportation from the airport to the hotel. There are airport buses with frequent departures that run between the airport to the city center and vice versa in each of the Scandinavian capitals. Trains and taxis may also be available from the airport to the city center. If you're taking a train or a bus, it may be necessary to take a taxi from the central, sta central station to the hotel. So it's just something that maybe check on. Um, and then you'll meet the group at your hotel that night for dinner and dinner time is listed in your departure letter. So important to read that little letter. Some information about the hotels. So the first thing you may notice about your hotel room is that it's smaller than what we expect in the U.S. And not all of them have air conditioners. Uh, most of the ones on our tours do. All the hotels used in our itineraries do have private bathrooms with a shower tub, uh, shower tub or, and a toilet and a sink. Many hotels in Scandinavia will use key cards, which you'll use to access your rooms and for electricity. There will typically be a box in the entrance to your hotel room where you can slip your key card in and that helps control the consumption of energy. Some of the hotels in the larger cities will have guest laundry rooms or offer cleaning services at an additional cost. For more information on these services, please ask the front hotel staff. More and more hotels in Scandinavia are going cashless, thus you'll want to have a credit card handy for any purchases at the hotel. Nearly all hotels offer internet access in their lobbies at a computer station and most offer Wi-Fi in their rooms as well. Now, before you set off on your own, grab a business card or a map from the front desk. In case you get lost, you can use the business card to ask for directions using the map in order to get back to your hotel. And most of the time you will find a hairdryer, an iron or a pants press, along with shower gel and shampoo in your room. So most days on tour will start with a departure from your hotel between 7.30 and 9, depending upon the day's schedule. And typically, we don't start that early. We'll usually tend to start more like 8, 9 o'clock. Um, but some, depending on what's going on that day, there might be an early departure. A breakfast buffet is served each morning at the hotel, so time should be reserved for eating before departure. Your guide will advise each evening on the next day's departure time. You can expect to arrive to your hotel each night around 6 p.m., sometimes earlier, uh, sometimes later, again, just depending on what's going on that day. On travel days, you can expect several stops to allow for restroom breaks and sightseeing activities. While most tours are leisurely, you can expect to walk short distances each day, sometimes over uneven terrain such as cobblestones. You will also need to be able to climb the steps in and out of the bus. Restrooms can be located in lower levels of buildings and sometimes there are no elevators, so please be aware of this issue. If assistance is needed, we ask that you bring a qualified and physically able companion to assist you. You can always choose to opt out of activities while on tour. We leave that to your discretion. Motorized scooters are not suitable for any of our escorted tours. Now, because unfortunately we can't control the universe, things do tend to happen that are beyond our control. It's, if something does happen while you're overseas and you need assistance, here are a few helpful tips. First, ask help from your tour director. From lost luggage to finding a good place to eat, your tour director is there to help ensure that your vacation is as carefree as possible. If you happen to leave your phone behind in your hotel room, need an injury seen by a doctor, or have something stolen, your tour director can be a huge asset in getting you the help that you need. If you are on your own or haven't met up with your group yet, seek help directly from the source, whether it be the airlines, hotel, or car rental agency. If you're lost, ask help from the locals. Most Scandinavians speak English fluently, and you will find that most are willing to lend a hand if asked nicely. If you need assistance right away, be sure to know how to place a call while you are in Scandinavia and what the local emergency numbers are. Emergency contact numbers will be included in your final documents packet, please review and bring this document with you. 
If your passport does go missing, please know where the U.S. Embassy is located so you can immediately start the process of getting a new one. And finally, be adventurous. Don't let one back thing ru ruin what could be a great trip. Just think of all the stories you can tell everyone back home. So it's a new travel world and we have a lot of questions I know about COVID requirements. So just to kind of cover some basics here, uh, this information could very well change tomorrow. So it's always nice to be up to date, but as of right now, most Scandinavian countries do not have a vaccine requirement for entry with the exception of Finland. Um, you do need a proof of vaccine in order to enter Finland currently. For your return trip home, the U.S. currently requires proof of a negative COVID test taken no more than 24 hours prior to departure. Because of the ever-changing requirements related to COVID-19, your tour guide will have more information about testing sites and options prior to your return flight. We do recommend bringing masks with you as some airlines may require them on board. Some venues in Scandinavia may also still require masks when visiting, thus it's best just to be prepared. And additional COVID-19 information will be provided in your final documents packet. Thus, please review this information prior to departure. So here are just some random tips that didn't really fit anywhere else that um, we thought would just make your trip more enjoyable. Uh, first off, the thresholds in Scandinavia are raised uh, a lot of times, so you'll find yourself stumbling if you're not careful. You'll also want to be cautious when getting in and out of any bathtubs in Scandinavia as they tend to be taller than the tubs we have here in the U.S. After finishing a great meal, you might find that your waiter or waitress keeps coming back to check on you but never brings the check. So if you find this happening to you, just kindly ask for the check and you'll soon be on your way. Speaking of eating out, tipping in Scandinavia is not typical as many restaurants will include a service charge in your bill. You can leave a few kroner, you can round up to the next five or 10 for your waiter or waitress if they were attentive, but leaving a 20% tip is not necessary. Now, while we're on the topic of tipping, we do leave tipping up to your discretion for the tour guides and the bus driver. You'll find a handy guideline in your travel tips guide on page four, and you can also offer a tip in US dollars, but local currency is usually preferable. Because your luggage can be put through the ringer to and from Scandinavia, it's a good idea to pack any liquids such as shampoo, conditioner, soap, and other liquids in Ziploc baggies to prevent any spills on your clothes. You may also want to bring a small bit of soap to hand wash any items you may want to rewear while traveling. And another handy tip and one that I cannot stress enough, call your bank or credit card company before you leave the U.S. to let them know where you are going for how long and expect some charges to show up. The last thing you wanna to have to worry about on your trip is how you are going to pay for things. Pack a couple of days before you actually leave. This will give you a chance to hopefully catch anything you may have missed. And finally, pack some snacks to take along with you. Granola bars, trail mix, etc. You can then use the space to bring home the items that you've purchased along the way. So we had several questions um, submitted on the registration form. So I'm going to go through some of those now and hopefully it will answer um, any other questions that I missed during the presentation. First one is how much money should I bring? And this is truly a hard question to answer because it depends on a number of factors, the length of your stay, the extent of your travels, and last but not least, your shopping and sightseeing plans. Our tours include all of your breakfast and most dinners during the trip. However, lunches are usually left up to you. You can expect to spend five to $15 for lunch in Norway, but if you eat a large breakfast and bring a snack with you and eat a decent dinner, you'll find that you really won't be needing a lunch that often. Other expenses are usually of a personal nature, such as laundry, drinks at dinner, taxis, and gratuities for the drivers and guides. I would recommend bringing a bag of snacks um, for, with you on your trip, um, like I had suggested trail mix, energy bars, granola, that sort of thing. 
You may also want to pack an empty water bottle. The tap water in Scandinavia is perfectly safe to drink and you can save two to three dollars a bottle um, just by refilling your own. And then on the way home, you can use that bag to store your souvenirs. Should I exchange money before leaving the US? If your bank can exchange US dollars into Norwegian kroner or Danish kroner, Icelandic kroner, then it may not be a bad idea to bring some money along. I would contact your local bank first to see if they have kroner or euros on hand, and if not, can they acquire some? You may also want to inquire if there are any fees in the rate of exchange. Um, you can then compare this to the market value to see if you're getting a good rate of exchange or not. If that doesn't work, the easiest way um, to exchange money is to exchange it at the airport when you arrive. After you get off your plane in your arrival city, the easiest way to spot other Brecky tour participants is to look for the Brecky luggage tag. We made these tags annoyingly bright for a reason. Um, main one is that they're easy to spot. So not only will it help you easily locate your luggage, but it helps locate potential friends on tours. So if you decide to arrive early, and the easiest place to meet your group is at dinner the night the group is scheduled to arrive. You should receive the time to meet your group for dinner in your information packet. And typically it's around 6.30 um, that arrival night. Should I bring a cap and mittens? Now, personally, I prefer the chance to be warmer than cold. If your tour includes time on a boat, which most of them do, or treks up north of the Arctic Circle or into the mountains, it's certainly not a ba bad idea to pack some warmer clothing. You can always take off a layer if you're warm, but if you're cold and left those items at home, then you are just out of luck. So are seats assigned on the motor coach? No, we ask that everyone on our tour switch seats on board the bus so that everyone gets a chance to sit where they want. And will we see the Northern Lights? As most of you are traveling with us this summer, the Northern Lights will not be visible. However, you will be able to take advantage of the almost 24 hours of daylight that parts of Scandinavia experience between June and August. If the Northern Lights are on your bucket list, I suggest returning to Northern Scandinavia, uh, such as Northern Norway, Sweden, or fin Finland, uh, or Iceland, between October and March, as this will be the time to see them. Um, the, do medications need to be in pharmacy labeled bottles? Now, the TSA currently does not require passengers to have medication in prescription bottles. However, I would recommend taking a copy of your prescription or snap a picture. Um, just in case you need to refill while you're traveling. Can I use my phone in Norway? Unless you have an international plan, your phone will probably not work. You can contact your carrier about an international plan. However, there are ways to make calls back home when you are connected to Wi-Fi. You can do this through FaceTime, Skype, or any of the other video chat applications. Just be sure to download them to your phone and try them out a couple of times before you head overseas. Will I be able to wash my clothes? Now, if you're planning to pack light and wash your clothes while traveling, you may be in for a challenge. Laundromats are pretty scarce. Uh, some hotels do offer laundry services, but it can be pricey. Taking items that can be easily hand washed in the sink and then hung overnight to dry is a great way to keep your traveling garments smelling and looking fresh. So any tips or suggestions for souvenirs? So depending on what country or area you are visiting, there are some great options um, that you can pick up to remember your time in Scandinavia. Postcards, Christmas ornaments, linens, magnets, music CDs, flags, clothing such as a Norwegian sweater, or small items are great for packing in your luggage for the return trip home. Other items, if you have room, um, it might include trolls or dolla horses, Viking replica carvings, glassware, reindeer or animal pelts, candles, pewter or silver item. Liquors are also popular, but you must pack those in your checked luggage. If you do need items shipped home, that can also be arranged. I would suggest asking the shop if they offer shipping to the US.
And you can also ask if they have an online store that you can purchase items. And that way you can just have them ship home as well. If you'd rather wait until you return home to purchase mementos, we suggest visiting mallofnorway.com. You'll actually visit, um, for anybody going through Flum, you'll actually visit their store. They have a store there in Flum. Now, if you're flying, if you're planning to fly with a CPAP machine, it is considered a passenger medical device, such as a wheelchair, so it's not counted as part of your carry-on allowance. To bring one on board, you must submit the make and model in order to get authorization to carry it on board. This information must be entered no later than 72 hours prior to their departure time. To submit this information, we ask that you please send us an email to tours at brekkytours.com and we'll pass this information along to the airline. Now, tipping is not included in the cost of your tour and is left to your discretion. While on tour, you can expect to have one tour director with you during your time in Scandinavia. You may also have local guides that join you for a short amount of time. These local guides are there to provide in-depth information into the sites and areas you will be visiting, while your tour director will provide general commentary, assist with any issues, and keep their tour group entertained throughout the journey. You will also have bus drivers that will accompany you throughout the trip. If you have been satisfied with our services, we suggest the following amounts as appropriate. So local tour guides, $2 to $4 per tour, uh, your bus driver, $4 to $6 per day, and your tour director, $6 to $10 per day. So, and that is everything. So I'm gonna open it up now to questions that you can submit um, down in the bottom right-hand corner. I know um, we've had some of our staff helping out and answering some questions while I've been talking. So, um, oh, okay. So I'm just gonna, let me scroll back up to the top here. It looks like we've had quite a few questions. Um, okay, COVID testing. So we will send additional information about COVID testing in your final documents packet. That way we can provide you with the most, or at least more current information. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, um, are there any restrictions around traveling with an external battery pack? Um, I'm not sure exactly what you mean by that one. So um, if it's like a lithium battery, I know the airlines have some questionable, they, they don't like those batteries being in, in certain pieces of luggage. Um, so I would, I would check um, with the airlines. We, I mean, as far as we're concerned, that's not, not a big deal, I don't think. Um, for your CPAP machine, let's see here. I'm trying to, I'm trying to pick out ones that haven't been answered. <laughs> oh, Joey answered about the lithium battery pack. Maybe I should just start at the bottom. So, cause Joey and Beth have been kind enough to answer some questions. Um, so if your flight comes in later than the group, there, uh, depending on where you're flying into, um, most of the Scandinavian um, hubs, Bergen, Oslo, um, Stockholm, they, they will have trains and taxis that you can take as well as buses. So there's three different modes of transportation. Bus is gonna be the least expensive. Train is probably in the middle and then taxi will be the most expensive. So, um, so I would I would check one of those. If you if you have questions about that, Jill, you had asked about the transportation. Um, please email us and we can we can give you some ideas on what what might work best. Uh, temperatures on the coastal cruise ship. Um, so depending on where you guys are at that time, uh, obviously Bergen and southern parts of Norway are going to be warmer. As you travel up the coast, it will get cooler. And you're also on the water, so that also makes um, things tend to be a little bit cooler. So if you're on the coastal voyage or on the Hurtigruten ships, I would definitely recommend bringing a coat and maybe uh, a beanie hat and some gloves because it can be really windy out there because you're just exposed to all the wind. Um, so it will definitely make your trip more comfortable. So... Um, 
Let's see here. And how do we compare exchange rates? Um, I would check the OANDA website. It's O-A-N-D-A com and they'll give you the market rates that are um, and you can actually look at historical rates too to kind of get an idea of what the average is so for the Norwegian kroner right now anything between like eight and a half and nine is probably pretty decent so um, it just it just depends it fluctuates from day to day but um, I would check the OANDA website to see what the market rate of exchange is um, and the best rate of exchange, uh, um, you can get um, you can get pretty good rates of exchange probably from the bank. That would probably be the best um, if you can do it here in the U.S. But finding kroner sometimes can be difficult, um, in, unless you're in you know maybe Minneapolis or something like that. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Um, uh, the tipping guides are per person. So that was a good question. Uh, yes. Yeah, so the tipping guides were per person. Oh, uh, the kroner equivalent to tipping guides. So let me just back up here. So let's see. So if we're looking at two, um, two dollars. So that would be about fifteen to twenty kroner. Um, so basically, I'm just multiplying the the numbers um, by eight and a half, and so that gives you kind of the idea of the Norwegian kroner rate. Um, so if you're looking at, um, say, you want to pay your tour director eight kron uh, eight dollars a day, um, that's about sixty eight dollars. So uh, or sixty eight kroner. I'm sorry, sixty eight kroner. Um, so I would just take those amounts and multiply them by eight and a half um, to kind of get an idea. Uh, let's see here. Joey and Beth have done such a great job answering questions. I may not I may not have too many um, too many to answer. So uh, I did have this tipping suggestions in U.S. dollars, but um, you'll want our guides are some of our guides are from the U.S. so the they're fine with um, US dollars, but most of your bus drivers and your local guys are gonna be local to that country. So they would prefer to receive the local currency, whether that be uh, Swedish kroner, uh, Danish kroner, Norwegian kroner, what what have you. So I hope that I hope that makes sense because each amount would be different than if I broke it up in the different currencies. Um, if we have any other questions, I'm I'm happy to answer those or Joey and Beth have been whipping out answers faster than I can read them. So um, let's see here. See if there's any that I could answer really quickly. Um, oh, somebody had asked about connecting with solo travelers um, and the group pre-departure uh, typically we don't do that we we used to send out a list um, but people got a little upset about sharing information <laughs> with others that they didn't necessarily know so that's not something that we typically do but um, once you get to your um, welcome dinner that night hopefully there'll be some time that you know people can kind of introduce themselves and and you can connect with other uh, solo travelers at the welcome dinner so, uh, yes, Icelandic kroner and Norwegian kroner are different. So each country has their own um, kroner. So there's Icelandic kroner, Norwegian kroner, Swedish kroner, Danish kroner. Um, Finland is the only one that uses euros. So everybody else has their own kroner. So, um, and somebody asked about Fahrenheit versus centigrade. They will use centigrade overseas. Um, we, of course, will use Fahrenheit. Um, if you are traveling with our guide, our tour director, Joy, she is from the U.S., so she'll probably use Fahrenheit for you guys. But um, most of the other guides and um, bus drivers will all use um, centigrade. Um, 
the Norwegian, somebody had asked about a Norwegian language translation app. I have used Google Translate. It is okay. Um, sometimes, I mean, you kind of have to piecemeal it together to kind of get what it is that it's saying. Um, but Google Translate would be a good one to use. Uh, somebody had asked about tipping is in the currency and we can't use a credit card. That is correct. So you would want to use cash for that, whether it be Norwegian kroner, Swedish kroner, what have you. Uh, a kroner conversion app, I have not found one that would convert. Most of the time I just do the math, um, you know, with my calculator. So if something is 1500 Norwegian kroner, I'll just take that and divide it by, you know, eight. And that gives me usually a pretty good um, estimate. So if we have any other questions, um, please feel free to send those in. Like I said, if there was something that you submitted on the registration form that was specific to your tour, we'll try to answer that via email and that way you have the information coming to you in your inbox. One thing to make sure is that um, our our email address is on your safe senders list. Sometimes our emails go to spam and sometimes there's important information that comes out. So we, we try to make sure that everybody gets what they need. But um, if you can have that, have us listed as your, as a safe sender, then that helps, um, that helps everything get, get to where it needs to go. Uh, electrical, uh, let me go back up to the currents, the electric current. So, so just to kind of reiterate, if your device is dual voltage, you'll only need the, the device that the adapter that changes the actual plug. Um, if your device is not dual voltage, then you'll need the converter and that will actually, um, change the voltage from 220 down to 110. So it won't fry your device. So, um. I did that with an electrical toothbrush and it's not, not great when, when you do that. So, um, <clears throat> I hope that answers your question. I'm just going to throw our contact information up. If you do think of something later, I always think of questions, um, you know, 20 minutes after I should have, um, please feel free to give us a call. You can also email us. And if you're missing that, um, Brecky tips, um, it's on our website and if you go to resources, it should be under there. So, um, it's pretty easy and it's just, it's several pages, but, um, hopefully, hopefully you guys can find it. Uh, yes. If you, if you want to run everything through a converter, you can. So it's not, it shouldn't be a problem. So, um, and yes, they do say the Apple products are dual. So I've, I've actually just used, um, I have a converter that has, um, a, a USB port on it and, um, that works, that works great. So they have some better looking converters out there now. That picture that I have on here is old. Um, but they have some new updated converters that are more like, a um, they're basically just a rectangle and you, you've got several different plugs and you've got some USB ports and you can plug, you know, all kinds of stuff in them. So, um, I would check out Amazon, Best Buy, Target. Um, they're, they're great places to get converters from. So, um, the one thing, the, uh, the Norwegians use the two round prong, uh, adapters. So that's, um, that's what you'll need to, to plug your devices in. So, Yes. Uh, so if anybody missed any of the presentation, I know we had some issues with the um, audio earlier. I have recorded this. I will be sending out a copy later today or in the morning, just depending on when I can um, get it loaded. And it'll actually have um, everything that I just said. You'll be able to hear my lovely voice one more time. And it will have all these uh, slides on here. And again, please contact us if you have any questions. We are here to help you and to make your trip enjoyable and hopefully as carefree as possible. Um, so I know with the COVID things, things are still a little, um, little, little iffy for some people, but hopefully we'll get, make it through all together. Um, 
Yes. Well, um, all of the questions that I answered on here will be, they'll be in the, the video. And then I, at this time, I don't plan on having another Know Before You Go webinar before August. Um, but things may change. We, we may have another one. So we've only got a couple of tours that depart late um, in, in the year. So we try to do these early to try and get everybody um, before they leave to go to Scandinavia. So, but um, we do have these two recorded and you can always go back and listen to them at any time. So if there's anything else, um, I will um, go ahead and turn this off for now. Oh, Maureen, um, let's see. So we will send you information on where you can get a COVID test um, before you leave. That will be in your final documents packet that you'll get a couple of weeks before you depart. So, and you can order those packets um, and they, they come to your house in like three days. It's, it's really fast. So, um, Actually, you know what, I can just include that information in this email that I'm, I'll send you guys that has the, the link to this video. That way, if you do want to go ahead and order early, you are more than welcome to. So um, with that, I am going to um, call it a day, I guess. <laughs> uh, but thank you all for joining us this afternoon. I hope we got most of your questions answered. If there's anything you think of later, please fill free to give us a call, send us an email. Um, we are ha happy to help you. And we really look forward to seeing you in Scandinavia this summer, wherever um, that might be going. So thank you so much. And I hope you all have a wonderful afternoon.